I can't tell you how strongly I feel what I've told you before. This budget was not only made carefully, it was made intelligently. Its purpose was, first of all, to provide the monies to carry out programs already authorized by Congress, and next to lay before the Congress certain new legislation of programs that we believed now was important for the United States and should be carried through. At the same time we're doing this, we well know that in an organization as vast as the federal government employing as it does two and a half million uh, civilians and three million people in the armed services, that to say that every bit of that budget is completely correct to the last dollar and you can find no ways of saving money anywhere if you can investigate long enough in any particular item or activity, that's foolish. Now, if we start in with this budget, we've got many parts that can't be touched. We have got interest in the public debt. We have got grants in aid that are fixed by law. We've got veterans charges. And then we've got long series of agricultural uh, programs that require from us money. You can't take these things and just uh, stop them in mid-stride. Some of them you could save a little money on by cutting into the program. We've got a vast expense of government in the post office department. But when you get done with all these things, you have in that field that deals with our future security, defense, the AEC, foreign aid, and these things are the ones that absorb the vast portion of the budget. Now, I don't know of anyone that has said we can cut our armed forces by 20% or 10% or any other thing that would give us a significant saving in the budget. In the budget. I don't know of anyone that thinks we should stop uh, producing fissionable material. Now, foreign aid. Foreign aid has no pressure group in any district in the United States. And so it comes up to the man who suddenly becomes very economy minded, and I must say, it's a very great, very great satisfaction to me to find out there are so many economy minded people in Washington, that didn't used to be here. <laughs> and so this becomes a fair target. But I say to you, there are no dollars today that are being spent more wisely for the future of American peace and prosperity than the dollars we put in foreign aid. And this again is not to say that some savings may not be made in this regard. I am told by the Defense Department they've found there has been, uh, they can make probably some year savings for one year by shortening up still further their carryovers, which has been a point of some argument for some years. But now, let's, if anyone is interested in the economy, let's go to the things that uh, are open for all to see. Take the post office deficit. I've been trying to get it stopped for the last four years, and I've made just zero progress, except through the efficiency of Mr. Summerfield and his people in giving service at less cost. Take the vast number, or the great number, of public works that are authorized without proper engineering studies to back them up. Congress authorized them, why? Must be for political purposes because the engineering department has not said they are necessary. We provide services. For many people in this country, we don't charge what it costs, such things as uh, patent fees and other things of uh, that kind. We lend money at a lower price than we can get it. The, uh, take the college um, uh, dormitory plan. I forget what the exact sum is. I think it's two and a half or two and three quarters. We can't possibly get long-term money at that price today. We uh, have 2% uh, money in some places, and we pay uh, three and a half or four. Now, if we would get these things on a business basis and tackle the problems where the money's going out, we would save a whole lot. But I tell you, it's futile to talk about the United States keeping up the position it must keep up in the world and measurably sticking to the programs that have already been adopted in the United States or have been agreed to be necessary for the United States and cut that budget severely. You can, as I say, you can save some money here and there, and I'm all for it, to, to the last 
dollar bill that they can save. And I think we can point out some specifics. But I've given you a number of specifics where we can stop some of this leakage right away. It is a, it is a matter of getting up and arguing for something because it suddenly becomes that people become economic conscience and not realizing what they're talking about. But I come back again in the security field. There, we are not going to touch any of these things severely or we're going to suffer. And of all of those, uh, I would say none is more important than so-called foreign aid. I perfectly, I'm perfectly sure we should refer to it only as mutual aid because it's not only the welfare of somebody else we're seeking, we're seeking our own future markets, prosperity, and peace. And so as we work with these countries, we are working also for ourselves. Let's not forget. Let's jump. On this budget question, sir, uh, there is uh, some congressmen are talking about the possibility of cutting your budget deeply enough to provide a tax cut. Do you think they can cut the budget <coughs> that far without incurring essential services? Well, uh, I believe that because the United States had to go to war, we couldn't build schools, and then there was a period of allocation of materials and you couldn't build schools, that while I don't believe in the general theory of federal government supporting education throughout our country all the time, I do believe this deficit must be made up. I've submitted two different programs. The first program I submitted put as much of a burden as we possibly could on the states, the second one took a little more on the federal government. And that calls for $451 million in the current budget. Do we want to say to the states, we're not going to build any schools? Now, Congress in its wisdom can say the time is not propitious. If it isn't, I imagine with our growing uh, population, the deficit will increase rather than decrease. And certainly, we want an educated youth in our country. That's one problem. If you're going to save this money, you've got to look at programs. You cannot just say, we take out 25 million here, 50 million there, 150 there, and uh, be doing anything except kidding yourselves. I notice some of the recommendations are, we're saving money out of obligatory uh, payments to uh, veterans and to others in the United States. Well, there is merely a question as to who is correct, the budget or the committee, in figuring out what we owe them. Because if if you haven't got enough in the budget to pay them, you just have one thing to do. You have to go down to the Congress with the deficiency bill because they've ordered the program. So I beg of you, when you think of saving money in this budget, think of what programs you want to eliminate. 